I'm a historian here at the University of Florida, and I direct the Samuel Proctor Oral History Program. And I guess I came through history in part because I wanted answers about how the society worked. And fast forwarding to um, the book I wrote, Emancipation Betrayed, that book came out of my, my interest in community organizing. How do people create social change? How do people change the society which is very uh, oppressive or repressive? Florida was a one-party state, and in 1920, if you were African American and you tried to participate in the state's politics in any meaningful way, uh, that was a, could be a death sentence. The question I had as a historian was, how on earth could you move people to take these tremendous risks? In the period of Reconstruction and the early 20th century, it was really through these secret societies, these fraternal lodges. These institutions were quite valuable, in, in part because uh, you had to be black to, to join these organizations, right? And they were organizations which existed uh, in part outside of white surveillance. That is, back in the Jim Crow period, everything in the black community was being spied upon. You know, there, there are all sorts of, of people who were paid informants, and so on and so forth. Um, it was much harder for them to get into a, a, a lodge like the Masons or the Daughters of the Eastern Star. That book is, is built upon Emancipation Betrayed and Remembering Jim Crow. But the idea is to talk about, um, kind of to compare African American and Latino histories. If you want to understand American history in the 21st century and all of this talk about we're becoming more diverse um, and it's no longer kind of a white only society, um, here's, here's some clues on how to kind of decipher that. Because my argument is, it's never been an all-white society. 